Hello, I'm Mark King, conference treasurer for Western North Carolina Annual Conference, and I'm also the conference statistician. I appreciate you joining with me uh, for this informative video about the year-end statistical report, as we're now upon that window for 2017 reporting. You may ask, why do we have to do this report every year? Well, it's a very important part of telling our story as a people of faith. Even if you go back to the scriptures, you'll see that God was a being of intentionality and order. God spoke to Abraham in Genesis 26, 4 and said, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. So evidently God was doing some counting. After all, we even have a book in the Bible entitled Numbers. And if you go into the New Testament, the book of Acts, and I'm impressed about how often growth was referenced throughout that book with specificity. So we use this report, we use the numbers and the stories that you relay back to us to do some very important planning and projecting in the life of our conference. It connects us in many ways because we are a united body. And that's why it's so important that all of our churches submit their report. It is actually required. The 2016 Book of Discipline, paragraph 606.7, stipulates that a year-end report will be submitted to the conference no later than January 31st of the forthcoming year. It keeps us accountable. If you were to go back and look at the minutes of John Wesley's annual meetings, it was very specific about coming in with the numbers of the societies and keeping them accountable for what they were doing in their churches and their communities. If we're going to be methodical Methodists, it's important that we track what we do. And I think most importantly, our numbers tell our story, a story that is important to share and relay to the rest of the connection as well as all of our communities of faith. You might be interested in knowing how the statistical report is used. The general agencies use it to help conferences, districts, and local churches plan how to more effectively minister in their communities. The United Methodist Publishing House actually uses them to assist in planning resources and in their marketing efforts. Other agencies use them to monitor how inclusive we are in terms of gender and race and ethnic considerations as we move forward to the United Methodist Church being a fully inclusive denomination. The bishop and the cabinet, they use the data from the reports in making appointments. And apportionments are calculated based on the information included in Table 2. Now we all know that statistics is not the most riveting and exciting part of our work. How many of you remember the Ferris Bueller's Day Off movie in which the Ben Stein character was a history teacher trying to solicit enthusiasm in his class over facts and figures? How many Christian education groups do you have? Anyone? Anyone? How many children are in your Christian education group? Anyone? Anyone? Well, let's hope our statistical reporting is not that boring. Well, on January the 2nd, the tables in Ezra, E-Z-R-A, will be opened for you to go in and put in your report. Ezra.gcfa.org is the website that we use in partnering with the General Council on Finance and Administration in Nashville, Tennessee, to compile and collect all of our data. Your church has its own particular page. When you first log on to Ezra, you will be asked to put in your ID. Your ID will be your GCFA number, and if you don't know what that is, call your district office, they'll be glad to provide it for you, followed by either the letter P as in pastor, or the letter O as in other. We give each church two IDs so that either the pastor or whomever else would like to go in and put in the report has that availability to do so. The initial passcode, and I'll be providing this in an email as well as being on the website, will be for 2017's report, stats, all in lowercase, at 2017. There you will be prompted to record your own unique passcode that only you will know. If you ever need any of that reset, 
Either call your district office or me in Treasury Services and we'll help you with that. Now I'd like to take just a few moments to review the form. So I want you to stop, quit taking your notes, and pause me. You over there in the red, you haven't stopped yet. Stop. Pause me. <laughs> and there's a lot of people that like to have the power to pause me, let me tell you. Go to the Western North Carolina Administrative website under Treasury Services and there will be a blank 2017 form for you to download. Take a few moments, get that, come back to the video, and let's look at some of these things. Now that you have your blank form in front of you, let's look at these. I will have to candidly tell you we're in a new quadrennium, and so therefore the 2017 form, as well as all the way through 2020, is very, very different from the 2016 form. So if you're trying to compare 2017 to 2016, you're just going to get frustrated because all the numbering has been revised and is different. We're hoping that it's a lot simpler, a lot easier to understand, less complicated for this quadrennium. The Table 1, which are the membership lines, they are very revised. Professions of faith are now segmented from confirmation and other than confirmation. I thought it was under B for bragging to the bishop. The totals for ethnic and gender calculations must match with line four's total for membership. There is now a special place for those of you who have online worship events. There is in-person attendance on line seven, and then separate from that on line 7A, if you have an online worship offering, you can put those numbers. Pay very special attention for instructions to line 11. Line 13 calls for the average weekly attendance in Sunday church school. Line 15 calls for the total number of classes or groups offered on Sunday and Sunday only. Line 16 is for those groups that meet other than Sunday, during the week for instance. Pay special attention to the specific instructions for lines 21, 22, and 23 for community ministries. These are very different this year. Now we move to table two. Again, like table one, all of those lines are revised. Look at line 25 for a moment. It is asking for liquid assets, those quickly converted to cash not tangible or physical real estate. Lines 29 through 36 are regarding the apportionments. Where did I put those apportionment numbers? Well, the good news is you don't really have to hunt for all of those yourself. Lines 29 through 36 will be provided on your report form by Treasury Services and Information Technology. We do not use line 29B, so you don't have to worry about that. We will also provide the data for you for lines 39 and 40, where the pension and health benefits are recorded. Where are those numbers? I do call on you to pay special attention for items on line 47 and line 49. A lot of churches make a mistake here and get confused. Routine maintenance and operational costs go on line 47. But major capital improvements, a new heating or air conditioning unit, new construction, a new roof replacement, all of those, those are major improvements and they go on line 49. Line 49 does not impact apportionments. I can't do this. So that's why it's very, very important that you put the correct data between those two. Line 50 is the sum total of table two. This is different from last year, which was line 60. We consolidated a lot of information, but line 50 will be your new total. Finally, table three also has some revised line numberings. There are not substantial changes in what we're asking for, you'll just notice the line numbers will be different. And there's a few categories that we have renamed or revised to help better explain. <sighs> just like last year, you have two supplements to complete. Supplement one, 
goes to your district office, and it'll stay there for all the names that you needed to add or subtract from your membership role in 2017. Supplement 2 was introduced last year, and I think it is a novel introduction, because here we're trying to move away from just pure numbers to you having an opportunity to tell us the story of your congregation. We want to know what you're doing on the inside of your church, and then what are you doing outside of it in your community. Please bear in mind that on Supplement 2, we require three signatures. The signature of your lead pastor, the lay leader, and your treasurer should all be affixed and returned to the district office. Submit. I want to remind you that your first line of contact in completing this report is always your district office. They have a wealth of information and they have a history with you and they can help you. But please feel free to email me at treasurer at wnccumc.org or call me at Treasury Services. Again, the year-end statistical report is not the most exciting uh, act of ministry that you'll do. But don't think of it as a dread. Think of it as an opportunity. It's a treasure hunt. You get to go back in the previous year and look at all the treasures that your congregation has been able to achieve and do. Some numbers may be down, but I got a feeling there are other numbers that are going to be up. And when you submit that report, it all comes together so that we are the united church making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And that report has a part in doing that. Thank you.